Now at 6 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, aid to Israel frozen while the House remains without speaker and security ramps up across the nation. Jim Jordan steps down from the House race in District 27. Congressman Michael Cloud comments on his vote. And the Texas Senate passed several bills, including a bill prohibiting COVID-19 vaccine mandates by private employers. It's Friday night. A lot of people out for football games. We'll be talking about all the games and all the weather that we expect. But let me tell you, it's going to be even cooler this coming weekend. We'll have all that coming up. And it's week eight of the high school football season, and the Lavaco River rivalry is the game of the week. We have the latest in sports. You're watching 25 News Now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker and I'm Karina Garcia. A 26 year old man in the Victoria County Jail held without bond. Logan Schaefer accused of running through several backyards and neighborhoods early this morning in the Quail Creek subdivision. The call started coming in around 5:45 a.m. Deputies caught up with Schaefer a little after 7 a.m. on the 100 block of Sandpiper Lane. This week, Goliad County Sheriff's deputies arrested two women on theft charges. Surveillance video shows the two women at a Goliad restaurant taking advantage of an unattended wallet. The victim quickly noticed and called authorities. Deputies arrested Maria Diaz and Ezio Monte Dioca. They were taken to the Goliad County Jail and the stolen wallet was returned to its rightful owner. The Salvation Army's Life Enrichment Center continues with its quick construction. With assistance from the City of Victoria, the Salvation Army could open the doors to the center sooner than expected. Construction began only two weeks ago, and the Salvation Army's commanding officer, Captain Kenny Jones, mentioned construction could end as soon as next month. The facility's main goal is to provide support to homeless and low-income families with job force training, laundry service, and much more. And now let's take a look at your forecast with Chief Meteorologist Mac Perez. Mac, it's Friday Night Football. I'm excited. Don's excited. Gina yeah. most excited. Busy right? weekend. Oh, yeah. Busy weekend. Lots happening. But for tonight, our game of the week is Edna Cowboys and the Industrial Cobras at Cobra Field. Mm -hmm. Should get down to about 83, 85 by game time. We're going to be clear and breezy, and the wind is out of the southeast right now. But I think that by the end of the game, it'll be turning around to the northeast because that's the cool front that's going to give us a real nice chill as we get into the weekend. We'll have more on your weather coming up in just a moment. Back to you. Mike, thank you. Israel facing growing criticism for an apparent intelligence failure before the Hamas attack. The Israeli military says it will now investigate the group's use of a half dozen training camps in Gaza after locations were reported. Yeah, at least six of these sites were close to the heavily patrolled section of the border with Israel. Many now asking how did these training sites slip through? Propaganda videos put out by Hamas reveal chilling details about the years of preparations that went into Saturday's bloody attacks right under Israel's nose. Analyzing metadata from the videos, a CNN investigation can reveal the presence of at least six training sites inside Gaza, one just 720 meters from the most heavily fortified and patrolled part of Israel's border. In that camp, Hamas recreated an Israeli compound with elements of the nearby border crossing, including an insignia of the Erez battalion. The videos show they even practiced taking prisoners and zip-tying their hands at the camp. Satellite imagery indicates the camp was constructed within the last year and a half. At two other locations in the southern part of Gaza, Hamas trained for their audacious paraglider assault, rehearsing takeoffs and landings. At all six sites, two years of satellite imagery reviewed by CNN shows no indication of offensive Israeli military action. The imagery instead shows that in the last two years, some camps even expanded into surrounding farmland and that there was activity in the last several months at the camps. The stunning revelations raise questions as to how Hamas was able to train so openly, so close to the border for so long, and why Israeli officials were unable to pick up on and prevent the October 7th attack. Clarissa Ward, CNN. 
In the United States, synagogues across the country are ramping up security today after a call to action by former Hamas leader. Rallies are expected across the country, some in support of Israel and some in support of Palestine. But despite these precautions, tensions from both sides are brewing. One Jewish day school in Maryland even canceled classes Friday after the Israeli embassy alerted the community of potential violence, though there were no direct threats to the school. The only majority of Palestinians had nothing to do with Hamas. They're suffering as a result as well. Police in a number of major cities around the country and places of worship announce increased security. And help to Israel is paralyzed as House Republicans are basically back to square one after Majority Leader Steve Scalise dropped his bid to become the Speaker. This has continuing tensions on Capitol Hill rise and the chamber remains stunned. Himself. House Republicans on Friday starting over, not without some frustration. I don't like the way this whole thing's played out, so we'll see how that goes. After failing to coalesce behind Steve Scalise for House Speaker, it's not clear whether Jim Jordan, who came in second to Scalise in an internal party ballot Wednesday, can get enough support either. If he can't get 217, there's going to be a new candidate. And on Friday, Austin Scott of Georgia announced a speaker run two, inviting another party divide. Any candidate needs to win a majority of the entire House to be elected speaker, which is 217 votes right now. That means a speaker nominee can only afford to lose four Republican votes if all are present and voting. Democrats expected to give uniform backing to House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries. Some Republicans eager to put the messy internal politics behind them and get back to work as fighting rages between Israel and Hamas and a U.S. government government funding deadline looms in five weeks. The problem has been consistently that uh, we've allowed emotion uh, to get in the way of logic uh, and in, in the way of the necessity to actually govern. Um, I did not come here to, to be emotional. I came here to govern. And um, we, the quicker we get past that, the better off we are. Congress has been without a House Speaker since last Tuesday, when eight Republicans joined with Democrats and voted to oust Kevin McCarthy. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. U.S. Congressman District 27 Michael Cloud voted for Congressman Jim Jordan for House Speaker Friday afternoon. On Facebook Friday, Congressman Cloud said about Jordan, quote, he's someone who can not only unite the different voices in our conference, but also lead us forward while inspiring millions of voters around the country who rightly think Washington is broken, unquote. A driver trying to escape Dallas police in a stolen vehicle Thursday morning was killed in a crash. Police say the chase began when they spotted a stolen truck. Video shows the dramatic moment when he crashed into another car. The suspect, John Carter, was ejected out of the truck in the rollover and died at the scene. Police say Carter also rammed into a marked police cruiser, hit a CD marshal's vehicle and crashed into a white truck. The other driver and the officers were not hurt. Officers were dispatched to an apartment complex in Huntsville Thursday where a man was reportedly acting erratically. An exchange of gunfire between the suspect and a police officer left the suspect dead and a police officer hospitalized. Sergeant Kyle Dockery sustained multiple gunshot wounds and was taken to a hospital where he underwent surgery. Dockery is a 17-year veteran of the Huntsville Police Department. The Texas Rangers now investigating this officer-involved shooting. The Texas Senate passed several bills in a 15-hour session Thursday. The state Senate passed a bill prohibiting COVID-19 vaccine mandates by private employers. Then the state Senate passed a school funding bill that provides one-time teacher retention payments starting with this school year. State Senator District 18 Lois Colcourse told us this $5.1 billion bill will give every teacher in the state a $3,000 raise next school year. The Senate then passed a school voucher bill that provides eligible students $8,000 per year for private schooling. The state Senate also passed two bills on border security. The first bill raises minimum sentences for migrant smuggling to 10 years. The second bill authorizes Texas law enforcement to arrest and prosecute all people who cross the border illegally anywhere in Texas. Punishment starts with up to one year in jail for a first-time offender, two years in state jail for a second-time offender, and up to life in prison for convicted felons who illegally cross the border. Senator Colcourse told us she expects that bill to be part of a lawsuit against the state. 
Caitlin Armstrong, the Austin woman accused of killing cyclist Anna Mariah Wilson in May of 2022, now facing an additional charge after briefly escaping custody Wednesday. KVUE reports Armstrong now facing a new felony charge of escape causing bodily injury. Armstrong ran away from authorities while leaving a doctor's appointment. Deputies were able to recapture Armstrong about a block away from where she escaped. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell so you can see Crossroads Today on YouTube. And stay with us coming up on 25 News Now at 6. Shocking details from Florida. A woman stabbed to death by her teenage son. Also ahead, a journalist covering the war in the Middle East dead after a shell attack. Here's a look at what to expect on Community Crossroads. We hear from Keep Victoria Beautiful, Moody Gardens. We also hear from the First United Methodist Church and Victoria Preservation. Something to do with the colonial period, the Texas Republic period, very early Victoria. So we've got some, some very interesting characters from, from those periods. We try to work it out so that it's a nice walk around in Evergreen Cemetery so that you're not going back and forth. videographer killed while working in southern Lebanon. The Reuters videographer Issam Abdallah, part of a crew providing a live signal. Now, according to the Reuters statement, two other journalists suffered injuries. Separately, the Associated Press reported an Israeli shell landed among a group of international journalists, killing the Reuters journalist and injuring six others. Reuters now seeking more information and working with regional authorities. We now bring you a shocking story out of Florida. A 13-year-old boy in custody after fatally stabbing his mother, who was found next to a newborn baby. Neighbors are stunned and police say there wasn't any sign of mental illness. A shocking crime unfolded inside this Hialeah apartment. Police say a 13-year-old boy confessed to killing his own mother. No previous history of mental health. Uh, no previous calls to the house. Uh, neighbors uh, don't know of any problems that were inside of the home. So this has uh, detectives as, as well as us, uh, you know, we're dumbfounded. Hialeah police say the boy called 911 around 1130 Thursday night, saying he just murdered his mother, identified by police as 39 year old Irina Garcia. When officers arrived to unit 201 inside the Amelia Oaks apartment complex, they found the victim on her bed with multiple stab wounds. Next to her was a crib and inside of that crib, a 14-day-old baby that fortunately was not injured. Police took the boy into custody. His demeanor, he was very quiet, apolog apologetic, um, very uh, respectful, 
and um, not what you would think, not what you would expect uh, walking into that home and seeing that crime scene. He's been identified as 13 year old Derek Rosa. Neighbors recognize him as the boy in this photo. This neighbor says he was shocked by the news and saw the boy as quiet and helpful to his mother. Now police are trying to figure out a motive for this family tragedy. Now we have to find out what brought or what took this 13 year old child to, to do something like this. Uh, it's something that we're all asking ourselves now. A solar eclipse that won't appear again until 2046 is happening this Saturday. It's called the Ring of Fire because when you see it, it will look like a circle of light. It's created when the moon is in front of the sun. NASA says it will be visible in all states, including Alaska. To see the phenomenon, you can get certified eclipse glasses or special camera and telescope lenses. NASA will also stream it online for the world to enjoy. Or maybe you could use this. But, one of uh, Max contraptions? Matt, yes, yeah, or right. one of these right here, one of these bad boys. Or, uh, yes, absolutely. Ooh. Let me see. You can't see anything with it, Mac. I'll, I'll show you. Uh, like, okay. <laughs> Here's your viewer poll this <laughs> evening. Uh, do you plan to watch the solar eclipse on Saturday? That is our question, yes or no. Here are the totals. Let's see. 72% 72 72 yes. saying, yeah, you're going to take care of that eclipse, and 28% say no. We want to hear from you. Come to CrossroadsToday.com slash vote to take part, and we'll have what you and your neighbors are saying on 25 News Now at 10, even if you're talking about this. <laughs> Cuero Turkey Fest, also tomorrow, the big oh, event, yeah. round two of the Great Gobbler Gallop. That is scheduled for 1030 in the morning. Round one last month in Worthington, Minnesota, went to Paycheck. Oh. Ruby Begonia has some time to make up if she wants to win. They use the time of both races to pick the winner. Shortly after the Great Gobbler Gallop will be the Turkey Fest Parade. Turkey Fest activities go on through Sunday in Cuero. And the weather for that, Mac, will be... Spectacular. Oh, that's always nice. And the funny part is that all the people on the parade route in Cuero are going to be out there when the eclipse occurs. It's Ooh. going to be strange. All right. We'll be talking about what that contraption is uh, because you can't look directly at the sun during the eclipse. Uh, uh, coming up in a moment, we're also looking at our current temperature. It got warm late this afternoon. It got up to 90 degrees. And of course, we may manage to get up to 92, but that's okay. Tomorrow, we're going to drop that temperature 10, maybe 15 degrees, and it's going to be feeling like October, all that coming up in a moment. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, if anybody headed to football, it's going to be a great evening. A little on the warm side right now, but 
During the game, possibly, the winds will be shifting around and you'll feel that northwest wind blowing in. It's right about here and just coming through the Austin San Antonio area. So it'll be down in our area very soon. That's the wind shift that's going to make the temperatures cooler as we get to the weekend. Other than that, we're looking pretty good. Of course, uh, Florida still drying up from all that tropical stuff that came from the Pacific. Let's look at our future tracker. There's the frontal system right through central Texas. It should be moving through our area around midnight, maybe earlier than that. Uh, so it all depends on where you're standing, but you will feel it uh, certainly tonight. And by tomorrow, it'll be a nice northwest wind blowing through the area, bringing us low humidities and cooler temperatures. I'm talking cooler. I'm talking October temperatures that you're going to like as we get to the weekend. Looks like uh, over along the Rio Grande, we may have enough moisture for some little shower activity as the front comes through. But then on Saturday, everything clears up as dry air, low humidity is really going to be taking care of us. Meanwhile, up here, you see this cloud deck right about here. Uh, that's a winter storm. Um, you know, we're not exactly involved, which is OK, but uh, that is getting to be a, a cold storm that's going to affect the eastern side of the country uh, over the next couple of days. Well, like as I, we've been talking, uh, what's happening uh, tomorrow morning between 11 a.m. and noontime, right about noon is the peak hour, is the moon is going to get in the way of the sun. So it's spinning around us. So we're going to be in this little shadow part, and that's why it's going to look rather spectacular. Uh, we have um, we expect this annular eclipse, which means that you'll see the sun around the edges of the moon. It starts at 1030 peak time, 1157, so right at noontime, and then it ends at about 130. Basically, it's going to be passing through and moving on, but it should be rather spectacular. And we'll show you my little contraption here in a minute. Get a load of these temperatures. Yeah, OK, 70s tonight, so not bad. Get a load of this in the 40s throughout much of West Texas. That's that cool air that's coming in our direction. In fact, tomorrow we'll be dropping about 10, 12 degrees and then even more. We're looking upper 70s for the early part of next week. And you can see temperatures will be nice and fresh up there. Here's a storm I was telling you about. This is the one that's going to be rolling this way. It's a big, powerful winter storm. So they're looking at big rain, cold temperatures and howling winds. That's what we're getting, but we're you know not so close to the center of the storm. So we're going to be getting about 25 mile an hour wind uh, as the system comes through. Then we're in control or this high pressure is control and you don't have to worry about this high. This is a good one. This is going to keep us clear and cool for about four or five days. Yeah, most of the week until the next frontal system comes in and that's not for about seven days from now. So if you get a chance to do a little fishing tomorrow morning, you got to know that it's going to be windy. Yeah, by morning we're looking for northerly winds at 15 to 25. So watch out for that. That's going to make the seas pick up and make the bays a little choppy. Your sunrise at 728, your sunset, look at that, before 7 o'clock. So tomorrow's day planner in the Port Lavaca area, looking for a northerly wind right about there, uh, starting off at 71 and getting up to about 82, lots of sun. And then we're looking at a 69 in Cuero in the morning, 82 in the afternoon. Again, that north wind making it good. So like I said, for Saturday, and Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and even half of Wednesday, we've got some spectacular temperatures. Look at this mid 70s overnight lows in the 50s. Well, that sounds pretty good. So the next front is not for another seven days. That's your seven day forecast reminding everybody we do have a QR code. Love for you to scan that and put Crossroads today on your phone. Here's Cutty now. Thank you, Mac. And I hear sports director Gina Perez. Thanks, Karina. The last Victoria East and West volleyball game was the closest series it has ever been. And this one's shaping up to be just as good. That's coming up after the break.
At a crossroads, sports are filled with competition and rivalries, and Victoria East and West is one of the biggest rivalries in the crossroads. Tonight, the girls hit the hardwood for another big match. Now, our sports reporter Zach is live. This is a live video of the game, so you just see them knocking it back and forth for now. And you know it's a big game because it's CFL Friday, and we're talking about volleyball. This is one of the biggest rivalries in the crossroads between East and West, and the East Titans came oh so close to getting its first win between these two a few weeks ago. Now they try to repeat that performance on the road. Currently, they are tied at a set win apiece. We will have some great highlights from this crosstown action later this evening. Can East defeat West for the first time ever? We will see very soon. It's October 13th, so that means crazier things have happened. And as you can see, it is pink out night for the West Lady Warriors for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Now up in Howellsville, the Bramas are preparing for its game against the Hempstead Bobcats. The Bramas are still searching for its first district win of the season. Howellsville will likely be packed tonight because a former athlete will be back in town. University of Texas running back Jonathan Brooks is going to have his number retired tonight. In high school, the state offensive MVP wore number 25, but now in college, he wears the number 24. The Bramas and the Bobcats take the field tonight at 730. Every win is important in this district because the district is one of the toughest in the state. Kickoff is at 730. The Victoria West Warriors are hoping to bounce back after falling to the defending district champions of the Veterans Memorial Eagles last week. West will host the 1-5 CC Ray Texans and look to put itself back in the race for the district title. West is currently 2-1 in district. Meanwhile, the Texans have not won a game since the season opener on August 25th. The two will meet at Memorial Stadium with kickoff being at 730. I'll be there and have highlights for that one. Another team looking to stay in the hunt for the district title are the East Titans. East is 2-1 in district and coming off a win over the Texans. The Titans currently sit at fourth place in the district, one spot ahead of the Warriors. After tonight, there will be only three games left, including the season finale between the East Titans and the West Warriors. The Titans are in Corpus Christi and kickoff in Cabinus Athletic Complex will be at 7.30. And lastly, the Lavaca River Showdown is important tonight because Edna can clinch a playoff spot with a win. Meanwhile, Industrial can be that much closer to a district title if they win tonight. We will keep you updated and bring you all the stats and highlights and everything else tonight at 10 for Crossroads Football Live. Well, your sports, Don and Karina, back to you. Thank you, Dina. We're going to be back in a moment. The baseball play playoffs are in full swing and in Philadelphia, a swingable art exhibit where hand designed bats are now on display. It's time to the step up to the plate and swing for the fences with a new art exhibit now on display in Philadelphia. Through October 29th, you can come to the Look Listen Gallery for their swingable art exhibit, where you can see bats hand designed by Bruce Tatum, also known as the Bat King. The Look Listen Gallery is free and open to the public. You can see whiskey distilled with the wood in scraps from one of Bryce Harper's 2022 World Series bats for the Phillies. Oh, no. <laughs> of course, the whiskey would have been better if they'd used one of the Astros bats because they won the World Series <laughs> last year. Yeah, the Astros uh, plug-in. Uh, that's right, and I don't know, well, I, we can't watch the World Series with that, but that, yeah, you we, can, that's not built actually, to do You that. can do the World Series, too. You can, you, actually, I can see next week's game. Uh, really? No, oh. just kidding. <laughs> Who wins? All right, well, <laughs> that's what I'm going to tell you. Ah. Well, folks, for tomorrow, for the eclipse, uh, we talked about the parts. We, I have a, a white piece of paper 
on the inside bottoms, and on the top, I've got an, uh, a, a pinhole right here, tiny little pinhole, and then over here for, for the ocular for me to look at. And so you stand with the sun at your back, okay? The sun goes through the pinhole, and when you look at it like this, you'll see it on the bottom, oh. and the kids okay. can enjoy doing that. Now, some guys get really crazy. They've got the real film, and of course, people like Karina are gonna be walking around yeah. with these on. I'm gonna have those, 100%. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mac. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 10.